Hey, everybody, this is Rita Springer. Welcome to the Rita Springer podcast. And worship is my weapon. If I don't take the train that's coming in now, what if I'm left alone? You don't have to be looking around your shoulder every moment. Like, there truly is things to be done while you're single. You can still bear fruit. I don't want this to come off negative toward guys because I think guys are great. Like, I'm raising a guy. He's amazing. Mm -hmm. But what makes me crazy about guys is that in travel, I meet some of the worst men I've ever met in my life. And I and I I'm sorry. But there is I'm a place, so excited to see where this is oh going. Oh gosh, there's a place in me that I'm like, I don't want to be out there and be grateful that I'm single. I did an episode a while ago, um, well, just a couple months ago called Singleness. We just put it out. I I felt like why don't we just talk about sometimes what the church doesn't talk about? And I know so many of you guys resonated with that. And I always wanted to do it part two because I feel like I started that conversation, but but I think that conversation's an ongoing conversation, mm -hmm. obviously. And so I I just was like, what better way to do part two <laughs> than while Anna Golden is back in the house? We're back. And and Anna just Got, got married. married. <laughs> I know. That's Which, honestly so crazy to say. I know, but I just was like, man, how cool. Because um, we had talked about before you were married, before you were engaged, mm -hmm. we were talking about, we need to do a, a podcast on singleness and just like, because of all the, like you have horrendous. Horrible. Horrifying dating stories. For sure. For sure. And some of the things that you said, I was like, oh my God, I've been saved from a fate worse than death. <laughs> well, I'm glad that I can be here to tell I mean, the I tale. Have some, I have some some crazy stories, but For sure. nothing like you. And so it actually is kind of cool. I mean, I I, I was thinking, oh gosh, you know that verse, um, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree <laughs> of life. And I'm like, that's what we are today. Here we are. Hope deferred and a longing <laughs> fulfilled. It's a great part two from the last episode, which was incredible, by the way. Yeah, I, I, and it's I so, wasn't, I didn't go at it thinking people were just going to be great. Well, with it, you were so honest, and yeah, I am. That. No one knows what it's like to be a single woman in ministry until you're a single woman in ministry, right? Right. So I feel like you hear people who maybe are married or engaged or dating or yeah. um, men like to talk about this as well. And you're like, okay, you don't get it. Yeah. And just to see, hear you speak on it, I think so many people felt seen. Yeah. And just like, oh, she gets it. Like, you understand. Um, which, I mean, when someone can kind of validate, like, what it's like, um, it really just, I don't know, starts the healing process. Yeah, and even though that's a massive subject, right? Single women in ministry, like, that's in and of itself. Totally. That's a massive, massive subject. I, I also, you know, I thought, um, I think I even said it in a comment on Instagram where I was like, I want to do part two would be like the problem with men. But then I thought, actually, <laughs> it, I think there's so many stories that we have where it feels like guys are the problem. But I felt like just the Lord being like, you know what? Guys have a really difficult time in their singleness mm -hmm. and they deal with something in a different way way than women do in ministry. So I really want to make sure not to exclude guys. Um, just because we're women, um, totally. I think we will talk in a certain vein. But I, I've met a lot of single guys, and I would assume that a guy in ministry, single on staff at a church, has its own for sure paralyzing truths. For sure. It's a very funny dichotomy. I've been married for 15 minutes now, so <laughs> I can, I'm speaking from the other side. It's like, okay, you've been married for six seconds. I literally just got back from my honeymoon. Um, and it's funny because before when I was single and kind of like, I remember one of the clips from the singleness part one and yeah. it was like, what's wrong with her? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there's this like curiosity of like, oh, why aren't you married? Mm -hmm. Like maybe you're not as trustworthy, like something's there. But now I'm experiencing this very funny other side of like, now you are married. What are you going to do with your ministry and your career? Right. 
And I had this moment the other day. My husband, wow, that's so crazy to say. His name is Enoch, and we were driving in the car. Um, and I was just like, how many people have asked you about your career since we've gotten married? And he's like, no one. And I'm like, that is every single person has asked me, what are you going to do now with your ministry? And I'm like, that's so funny. Now I always thought that yeah. I would be looked like more trustworthy because it was always like, oh, a single person in ministry is a little rogue. Are you being pure? Are you staying holy? Yeah, yeah. And then now on the other side, it's like, oh, well, are you going to be able to be a wife and then a mother and then Isn't also so lead people? And I'm just like, cut it out. What in the world? I'm like, if unity commands a blessing, if the multiplication of one to two people coming together put one to 10,000 to flight. Yes. If it's a 10x multiplication, then what's going to happen with my ministry? It's going to 10x. Yeah. What's going to happen yeah. with my career? It's going to 10x. Everything in my life now can 10x too. So I think it's like this very weird now. What do you think that is? Where's the foundational backbone of that? thing that you feel on that question i i don't know it's honestly so fascinating and i think it's something a little more deep rooted inside of just like culture in general yeah. of like that misogyny of like well now you're a woman and a woman can take care of the house and i'm like i can do all things and the benefit of this is him and i can wear all hats and switch them around however yeah. they need to be um, and not to just put people in a box or assume things are going to change. Obviously, like I'm going to my first priority besides the Lord now is my marriage. So, yeah. of course, maybe availability isn't the same. But I'm like, that doesn't mean that I can't do something now. And I and I really want to fight for that, too. I mean, with other women that I know that are going to get married, I'm like, both of you can still dream. But now you get to do yeah. it together. I think the same thing happens though, Anna, when, when, uh, you know, there's a pregnancy and, sure. and couples start having kids. And the, if the girl's in ministry or if she's a worship leader, it's like, what are you going to do now? It's, I mean, I'm like, I put a kid on my hip as an artist traveled all over yeah. the world with a stroller and a car seat. And I wasn't called to anything less yeah. Was it harder? Uh-huh. Did it take a lot more push and shove? Absolutely. But I think when you're called to something, for sure, you have to stay called to something, even though the season makes it look a little different. I would just like us to get rid of the, whatever that thing is that says something's wrong if you're single or, or, well, can't do that now. Cause you're married. Yeah. You're you not know? as available now. That is so real. And I think that, so I, I wonder if we talked about this previously. I was engaged when I was 20. Oh, like, we've talked about that. Yeah. I was like a child. I could have been a child bride. <laughs> <laughs> Thank the Lord. Um, and what's so funny. No, your stories need like a bag of popcorn. Guys, I've experienced a lot. Anyway, <laughs> I engaged at 20 in full-time ministry traveling. Yeah. And I just remember not feeling like my relationship was from the Lord to just save all other details and remaining pure in it, still feeling like it wasn't the Lord, but feeling this pressure of it needs to happen though. Like I have to get married and everywhere That's I was huge. at, it was, it was kind of always the conversation. Um, and now I think even when I get the opportunity to mentor girls, I'm like, I'm so happy I did not get married at 20, 21 to a person that wasn't for me. And yeah. I'm now like actually being married to the person I feel like the Lord has set aside for me. It is like this, if the per, if the Lord came to me in the flesh and it was like at 20, it was like, hey, I need you to call this off. This isn't of me, but you're not going to get married for seven years. Mm. So you're going to have to wait. I don't know. I I don't know how I would respond to that. And then I now I'm going down this whole timeline with the Lord where the Lord's yeah. like, this is why you don't understand my timing and this is why I can't tell you everything. <laughs> I'm like, but wait. That's right. And I'm like, because I don't know if I would have made that decision. Mm -hmm. Because I think oftentimes, especially right now, like I have so much grace for women who are single, even men, like I've heard men say the same thing. Um, there's such a scarcity mindset 
of like, okay, I found this person. I'm just going to make it work because there really is nothing else out there. Yeah. And I really just got to hunker down and do this. Now I'm saying like, there is an approach to, you're never going to find a perfect person and the Lord will give you grace for the things in them that are still developing hundred percent. But there also is someone that the Lord has set aside for you. And that doesn't mean, that means waiting sometimes. That means being like, okay, this doesn't really make sense to me right now, but I am going to, I'm like, I'm the biggest romantic in the sense of, I mean, we talked about this so many times. Mm. I was like, first of all, I never knew that I was going to meet someone that I liked enough to marry them. (laughs) Cause I was like, I was a little worried. Yeah. (laughs) So specific. But the second thing was, it was because I was like, I know the Lord has best out there for me. And yes, there's so many, I mean, we've talked about it. There's so many guys like in my life or in like, They'd be like, okay, this could have maybe worked. We could have tried it out. Yeah. Guy at 20, I could have worked it out. Yeah. We could have figured it out. But I'm like, there really is something in waiting for the Lord's best. And not to put this like, I don't know, culture timeline of it has to look like yeah. this. It needs to be like this right now. I don't know. I've actually thought about that a lot because, you know, there's so many, I've, or I've heard stories of so many bad decisions based on that. Like where... It's, it's the, the, the fear of it's never going to happen. This is it. Let's just do this. And I don't know if people would actually say that's exactly what I knew was going on. I think it's that you think it's the right person and you have all these feelings, but you're not really aware that is it more of an emotionally based thing than it really, it really is. That's the person that's going to like be your ride or die for the rest of your life. And I don't know that, that. A lot of us, especially women, go into I like you say like you're a romantic. For me, I wanted the whole picture. Totally, you know, I I, I wanted it, it to be a, a godly man. That was my first thing, and I wanted it to be, and I wanted to, and I wanted the whole kind of thing. And so when one thing was off, it made everything feel out of balance. Yeah, and for me, it, there was I already had enough maturity to be like, I don't, I don't think this is right. Like this, there's a red flag here. That's the thing. I don't know that there are people that train themselves for the red flags or train themselves to be like, I don't know if this guy like, or this girl, it could work both ways where there's, if you're coming into a relationship with so much baggage and you're young, you don't understand how to actually disperse your baggage all the time when you're mm-hmm. young. And so you have to realize, oh my gosh, I'm not only carrying my own baggage, but I'm going to have to help carry them with their baggage. And that just makes a rough start to a marriage. Yeah. And I think for me, because the years kept going on and the years kept going on, uh, you know, by the time that something did come and it looked like that might be the thing, and then all of a sudden I recognized this guy is what age? And he's still got like, <laughs> he's got like dump trucks of, of, of mommy issues. I'm like, I ain't carrying that. I'm not. And it didn't have the emphasis, but I do think there is this fear language that we, that we speak over ourselves that say, mm-hmm. I better take the train that's coming in now. Cause yeah. if I don't take the train that's coming in now, what if I'm left alone? alone. And I think that's the word that gets people off balance with the Lord is aloneness, which is so interesting to me because it's the first word you see in scripture that God deals with. The first emotion that God deals with. It is not not good good for for man to to be be alone. alone. And so I think God recognized that there had to be companionship. I think it's all a part of marriage. I think it's a part of the whole female male dynamic of what the Lord believes in. But I also think the Lord knew how the enemy would use loneliness as a massive destruction and distraction in, in our, on our walk and our journey. Wow. And it's everywhere. It's in the language of the fear. I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be alone. How many, I mean, for me, I've talked to so many women who are divorced that are down there like third marriages because yeah. being alone is more frightening than actually being married to the wrong guy. Yeah. And I and, and that's just like, oh my gosh, have at it if you want, you know, yeah. a, a graveyard's full of baggage and dilemma and broken relationship. I just I I had enough sense that I was like, no, I think I 
I'd rather wait for the right thing. Yeah. Now also too, and I, you know this story about me. I had an encounter with the Lord. I, I don't tell this a lot, but I had an encounter with the Lord when Justice was like three years old. And I was lying in bed one night immersed in loneliness. And I just was like, why? Like, why God? Why? why what is it about me that mm -hmm. you couldn't have found him by now? Like, is, is something like really literally asking the Lord, is there something, do I need to hop on one leg? Do I need to, you know, is there some thing in me that I've got to do? And, and I heard the Lord say, he made the wrong choice. And I actually saw the guy's face and I've never had that happen to me. And that was riveting to me. And I ended up having long conversations with the Lord about what happens when you're who you're supposed to line up with, there's a there's a wrong choice in the middle of that. Because I grappled with that. Was that the Lord? Did the Lord yeah. actually say that to me? And that's <clears throat> you're gonna have to go down to your own like theology road on that, you know, type of thing. Sure. But for me, I knew like everything in my spirit, I was like, oh my gosh. And I there was this sympathy from the Lord being like, it was nothing about you. But I still need you to respond in obedience the same way I need them to respond in obedience. And if one of you all isn't responding, then that, that occurrence is never going to happen. And there's something about the Lord being in your obedience and their obedience yeah. that brings the story into its revelation. Wow. And, and that's hard to handle when you're like left being like, so what? That's on me. <laughs> I'm saying, I was even I was like, that. I was like, that's on me. And it's like, no, but I need a yes from both sides. Yeah. And if I'm only getting a yes from you, but I'm not getting a yes from him, then you're not going to be aligned with who I'm like, no, no. If they were walking in what they are called to walk in, the alignment would be fascinating. Hmm. And I, I think that's what goes back to, are you walking hmm. in the obedience of the Lord for your own life. Because that's one thing I was like, oh, I want to ask Anna this, especially in singleness and in your journey of singleness, which was quite treacherous, actually. <laughs> and you were great for me because we'd have these massive conversations on the back porch a lot when you're here. And your mentality changed. And that's what was so beautiful for me to see in the last year. Mm -hmm. We had this conversation when you were here one time and you were like, you were just kind of devastated. You were like in the sinking despair of singleness. You were looking at your future and you were like, I don't want to do this alone. Yeah. I don't want to do this alone. And I said, stop dating what you feel worthy of. Because mm -hmm. you're dating a bunch of jerks. <laughs> all right. And I was just like, yeah. how are you in all your credibility, um, you know, walking around and and the choices that you make are choices you make in the fleeting moment not choices that you're actually really thinking about but in the mm -hmm. moment they feel like maybe mm -hmm. thought processes but i'm like i want to ask anna because therein lies the question of i can say what's wrong with me yeah why, why am i still single is there something wrong with me i'm sure that there's always something that we could shed sure but that actually provides another question that takes a little bit longer to think about and answer. And that is, can something be wrong with us? Yes. Can something be wrong? Can you be the reason why you're single? Yeah. Because we want <laughs> some, like when, when, when you're saying something wrong with me, something wrong with me. You kind of want to hear, no, it's a guy's Nothing. fault or it's a girl's Could fault. Could have never been it's you. It's just the timing of the Lord or it's this and this, which is like, yeah, 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 yeah. But let's talk about that. Yeah. What happens when it is you? Yeah. What happens when you're the obstacle? I am, um, <laughs> like you said, I dated something about me. I was always dating. There was always someone in the picture. Like, even if, and I was notorious for dating people. This is horrible to say. Sorry to everybody I've ever dated. I was notorious for dating people that I didn't even like that much, but yeah. I would just have someone. And I remember sitting down with a mentor and she was like, I think you need like an actual season of singleness. I'm like, I haven't had an official boyfriend in like a year, but I had people 
Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I was, there's someone that I would call. There's someone that I would text. There's someone that I would go to the movies with. You know what I mean? Like I had someone there and this was probably, I want to say in the fall of 2022 and the Lord was just like, I can't fill a place that you keep having stuff there. Yeah. And until you leave in vacancy, I could never yeah. bring something there. Yeah. And it was like, huh? Cause I think I was always expecting to like have a vine in my hand and then switch over to the vine that I would stay on to forever. Yes. If that makes sense. Yeah. And it wasn't just never a free fall. <laughs> it was like, I always had like a vine. Yeah. Um, and I think that there were so many mindsets in me that I had to undo of like learning to love being alone and love, um, I don't know, love the idea that my life was completely enough. I had so much codependency in me yeah, yeah. that, um, I mean, I was raised with so many siblings. Me and my brother did every single thing growing up. I was like bred to be in a pair. Like everything, like my brother went to all my school classes with me. We went to ballet yeah. together. If I want to do ballet, if you want to do soccer, we did soccer. Like I just realized that I always love companionship. And I don't think that was yeah. wrong. Yeah. I think that it just, when it turned into like, okay, well now I always need someone with me. I need someone that I can call in the car. I need someone that, I, and, and I had to truly actually fill those spaces with the Lord, not to sound too spiritual, but it was this moment of, um, I remember getting in the car one time and like looking through my like, OK, who am I going to call? And the Lord was like, can you sit and talk to me for a second? Yeah. And I was like, hmm. And I just realized I had all of these spaces that I filled with other things. And the Lord was like, until we empty those out. Like yeah. even, and I mean, to be so vulnerable, I don't think I've ever said anything like this. I would go to conferences and I'd look at the crowd. I'd be like, hmm. Like I was not the kind of, I wasn't like the single girl wow. on the sidelines. Like when I would meet people, I'd be like, Hmm, like I'm always like, okay, Lord, who are you trying to bring into my life? And I think that it was, That's, that is interesting. In the fall of 2022, there were so many things that it was happening in my career, you know, so yeah. many shifts. I was getting ready to make this record yeah. about the church and I feel like the Lord had me deep dive into everything that had to do with church. And what is the relationship that the Lord equates to the church, the bride and the bridegroom yeah. and how set apart the bride remains and how um, steadfast and you can't have split vision. Yeah. And I'll say like, I thought in my brokenness that I would never be fulfilled with the relationship that I would have. That there would always be, I had this fear of missing out. I had a fear yeah, yeah. that I I remember I would have dreams that I would get engaged to someone that I love. And then I would literally, this was a reoccurring dream for me. I would get engaged and then I would get on an elevator and there would be a person in the elevator. And I'm like, that was supposed to be my husband. And oh. he would look at me and he would look at me and he'd be like, but you're engaged. And I'm like, <gasps> it made me so afraid to be in any committed relationship because I was going to miss the perfect person the Lord had for me. And it turned me into a monster. Like it turned me into the most anxious version of myself of like, oh, well, what if I tie myself down and then I meet someone better? And I think that that is not only a struggle that I have, but in my generation, it is crippling. Indecision. Where, where do you feel like, because you talk about, you, you brought up codependency. Do you think that it is... I mean, it feels like a lot of that is the backstory of trauma, things sure. happening, you know, a thought, a circumstance that happens that creates a thought process where then you're, you're trying to survive and you adapt survival skills and, and part of your survival skill then is you can't be alone. You can't be alone. Always have to be with somebody, always have to be with somebody. Totally. And that you're going to be deprived of not having the best so keep all these other people on reserve and then you'll probably make a mistake in the process there anyway because you're a mistake maker, blah, 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 blah. It's almost like a... It's just a swirl. It's a swirl. Caught in, and I know so many of my friends and peers who are in the same swirl. Yeah. And I think um, Man. it was got to be December. I was at a staff retreat with my church and I... The Lord's relationship with me, 
I always like kind of equated a bit to like uh, Lucy and Aslan from Narnia. Like I yeah. feel like the Lord is always like so protective and so kind as he is for all of us. But like this like father daughter dynamic. And it was in December of 2022 that I felt like the Lord was like, all right, you're going to grow up. I was like, okay. Um, he's like, I don't want you to have alcohol anymore. I don't think alcohol is a sin. Yeah. I think that the Just way all that the you, social drinking. Yeah, I think stop. that the way that you can partake in it, I think it's different for everybody. Um, to think that conviction is universal, it's not. Conviction is personal, yeah. and that's where relationship with the Holy Spirit yeah. comes in. So I'm like, okay. So I remember writing these things down in my journal, and then the Lord was like, no more placeholders. Like everything, everything's getting streamlined in my life. And I was like, okay. So then I go into this process of creating my record. Um, and there really was just like this difference. Like there yeah. were blinders on. There wasn't someone in my phone that I'm talking to. There wasn't no, like I, I, yeah, anyone. To that. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it was very, it was, different. Very, different it was very different for me. And I really felt the Lord start to heal so many places. Then fast forward um, like six months, I'm sitting on your couch. And you you asked me, you're like, do you want to be married? And I was like, I think that I always knew that the relationship I wanted had honestly started to feel a little too good to be true. That that's where I turned into this like, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'll even like anybody enough to be married. Cause I'm like, I don't even think that person could exist at this point. Like, and now I'm like, and I don't want to be disappointed and I don't want to be with someone and have this like, Oh man, was there someone else? Yeah. Like it was like, I would just rather not have any of those feelings and just whatever. Yeah. And you asked me that. And I was like, yeah, I do. Like I would mm. love, I love partnership and I love companionship. And I would love to build something with someone. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if you remember this. You gave me a word because it was the process of making my album is really hard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you were like, the Lord told me that you're in a season of you just have to ask. Mm. And if you need something, you just need to ask for it. And this was probably the first time I ever prayed and was like, OK, Lord, this is actually something I want. And I'm putting my hope out there again yeah, that the like, risk of it. Yeah. yeah, that maybe the disappointment could come, but I'm like, you know what, whatever. And then that like over the summer, Enoch and I started dating yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was just like this. So fast. It was really fast. We knew each other. We were in each other's lives for a while before that, but over in like the July time, we spent a lot of time together. And I think that the thing that I thought was impossible inside of a man particularly in a relationship with me was someone who communicated with the Lord how I did. And I had never, even in being engaged before, I had never shared a spiritual intimacy with someone. Yeah. And it was so different. Like being able to not dumb myself down spiritually to be in a relationship yeah. was earth shattering to me. And I'm like, I think he's like the hottest guy ever. And he's so fun and he's so funny. But that piece, I just remember thinking like, oh, I I feel like I've struck gold. Like I didn't know you could yeah, exist. Yeah, you, you didn't talk about that with some of the other guys in the stories yeah. of your dating. You never really talked about the spiritual piece, but you talked about all these other things. And Enoch was different. Yeah. And I think that that was just transformative for me. And I really did feel like the Lord... Um, this was like a funny moment. I actually shared this in my vows at my wedding and, um, my family is really funny and they have a hard time pronouncing Enoch's name somehow, which is funny. But my brother, one time we were traveling together a couple months after we started dating and he accidentally called Enoch Emmanuel. And I was like, Oh my God, his name is Enoch. <laughs> and I like felt Holy spirit inside me, like just like chuckle and was like, but he is a piece of me that stays with you. And that was his, that was my gift to you, that you always have a piece of me next to you, standing with you. And I literally just like wept. Oh, wow. Because I was like, that really is what it feels like. Yeah. And um, I now, I thought about this like two weeks before my wedding. 
And I was like, if I could, I remember the day I called off my engagement. I was in the closet of my house in Los Angeles on the ground, just sobbing, being like, am I making the right choice or am I never going to find someone like this again? Yeah. And if I like the me two weeks before my wedding with Enoch, if I could go back to that 21 year old girl and like grab her face and be like, this is, you're so brave. Thank you for making this decision. Yeah, yeah. Like thanking my younger self of being like, thank you so much for standing up and choosing what feels hard right yeah. now. And I think for those who are out there who are single or even in relationships that feel mm-hmm. like, oh, this is good, but it's not God. Yeah. Like there's such a difference. There's such a difference of, all right, it'll be okay, but it's really not what the Lord has best for me. And it's like, Getting that courage inside of you that, man, there is a version of yourself in the future. And I don't know when that will be that will go back and thank you and be like, thank you for making this decision. Or even in your singleness, thanking, thanking you for taking care of that baggage. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are so many things that like if I would have gotten married at 20 versus seven years later, that I would have brought a lot more stuff even into the the marriage. And just making it harder because people being people together causes pain. Right. And it's like letting Holy Spirit help me surrender so many of my areas of my life and just growing up with mature in maturity. Yeah. And I think that like singleness and what I learned was like in the singleness season, it's not scanning the crowd anymore. It's okay. What in me are you trying to do? And I'm like, I'm like, you put yourself out there. Don't put yourself on a shelf. Like, I'm totally in all of that. Yeah. But it's, there's also a level of like, you don't have to be looking around your shoulder every moment. Like, there truly is things to be done while you're single. You can still bear fruit while you're single. I just think that the reason that that, that is the question or that is always put in question and feels like, it's great advice to hear, but it's hard sure. to do. Is because I think so many single men and women, you know, I, I, I think it's easier for us to speak to women because we're women, but um, I know guys struggle with the same thing where mm-hmm. they're just in a frenzy. There's a frenzy of uh, you're looking at, at time in, in form of, of being older and older and older, and then there's this other record playing that says if you're not – Married by this time, well, your chances. I mean, they they call they call a, a pregnancy in your mid thirties. What do they call it? Like geriatric. Which I mean, it's always like crazy for women. It's like this stuff that that is the timelines that are put on us as women to be like, oh, what you can't do that when you're that age. You better do it before. You better do it before. Even in the music industry, it's there. It's like a guy has, yeah. you know, I was watching a round table with, um, with some of Hollywood's elite actresses and they were talking about the fact that it really doesn't matter in acting. It's in every entertainment thing within the world and outside the world, but that a guy kind of has 20 years on us that, that we could be the same age, but a guy will get 20 years more of film time and more of, you know, career time or music time or record time or whatever than a woman because it's been put out there that there's this time limit. And I think it creates this frenzy for those of us that are single where we're panic driven. And because we're panic driven to, to be seven years part of that, that 21 year old girl was in a state of panic when you were 21. And And literally, yeah, it had to almost be, you had to, how do you do it without the Lord? Like you almost have to have an encounter where you, even if it's a moment of registry where it's like, I am not, something is not wrong with me because I'm going to cancel this engagement. Like I'm feeling red flags. I'm going to be strong to do it. Uh, I was, I was talking to somebody last week about just in the process of making this record that I'm trying to make and the, and all the fear and the failure. And, and I think that that word failure is such a big such a big looming thing. It's like, you don't want to fail at something. You want to succeed at something, but you're looking for the happy picture. Like you're looking for the fairy tale. All of us are. Of course. And when, when you've got all this fear kind of in you and all this sense of what if I fail at this and what if, you know, this happens and this happens. And I remember having a conversation with the Lord where the Lord was just like, 
That's so interesting that you use failure and fear all the time. I just don't use those words. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, well, I have a different word for failure. And I'm like, what's your word for failure? And he said, bravery. Mm. Instead of seeing it as, um, is if I do this, it might fail. So I better like hurry up and, you know, I, I, he said, just be brave at this. And I think well, there's so much bravery in us that so we've got much. to discover that bravery is ending a relationship. Totally. Bravery is going out on that date, even though you're like, I don't know if this is it, but I feel like I'm supposed to do this or saying yes to something or, you know, but most of the stuff that keeps us from those, you know, storylines seven years later mm -hmm. is that we're so caught in traumas and decisions and bad stuff in bags that we're not willing to actually see about ourselves. Yeah. And I think that is where I'm like, man, I, I would love to talk about singleness more, but really talk about what in us has to change in order for us to be seen. For for so many women, I've even said, like, look, because somebody said, and I'm sure, Anna, they've said this to you, you're still so young, but what are you doing to put yourself out there? Sure. Like, <laughs> you got to position yourself. Oh, like, what are you to doing? Be more you're not doing anything for a guy to. Oh, and oh. it's like, oh, but this one was my favorite. This one was my absolute favorite. <laughs> and I just want to set any woman free who has ever heard this that. You're too strong. Oh, and you will never all the time. attract a man because you need to know how all to the submit. Time. And I will say that my pastor, because I was in a relationship that a man would tell me that all the time. He's like, I can't lead you because you're too strong. And I remember telling that to my pastor, and he was like, Absolutely not. That is not the man for you. Because when a man that you're supposed to be with is with you, he will rise to the occasion. That's right. And you will not have That's to right. dumb yourself down so someone can lead you. That doesn't mean that you're some man hating, right. like too strong. I am woman, hear me roar. I'm not saying that. Yeah. Or control freak and have yeah. issues with control. That's no, a whole different this other is, subject. You are also called to be a strong yes, woman absolutely. and to be a leader. And a man who is strong and is supposed to lead you will be able to. Yeah. And that was truly like something that, like what I said earlier, I didn't have to dumb myself down to be in the relationship yeah. that I'm in now. Yeah. And I never feel that I have to like shy back so I can let him lead. Yeah. And I know that and he, him and I have had really vulnerable conversations too, where he's like, there are so many areas in me that when I started dating you, I was like, oh crap, I have to get this together. Like I have to stand taller. Because you are further yeah. along than me yeah. in certain areas. And I'm like, be set free that the man you're supposed to be with, that line of like, oh, when a guy's with you, it's like, oh, you're too good for me. I'd be like, okay, I am then. Because you're not willing to do the work exactly. to grow, exactly. to be taller. So, exactly. so a guy says that to me, there's no, no, oh my God, I'm not too, no, okay, fine. I'm too good for you. You, yeah. Yeah. you weren't able to rise to the occasion. That I think that's so freeing. Yeah. I I I mean I'm I'm in my in my 50s and it's the thing that I hear all the time. I am strong. I'm intense. I mean, <laughs> you meet me and I'm intense and I'm strong. Let me just put let me just not put a disclaimer on this but explain it. When you are living the life that I've lived mm -hmm. for 56 years and you were doing it on your own, Parents are gone. You don't have family around you. You're doing this by yourself. You better get your stuff together. You have to be or, strong. Or you're going to be sucked into the ground. And I mean, I, I, if, I'm, if I'm called to do what God's called me to do, there's a level of strength I've got to muster up and to get it done. And because I'm alone, I've got to do double the work, double the thing. I mean, I even remember having you know, feeling that the responsibility of the household and raising justice by myself and all the things that God called me to do that I did so willingly. And then, and then absolutely like with pleasure, you know, do those things. But it's like, this takes a lot of work and effort. You want to know why I come off strong all the time? Cause I gotta be mm -hmm. It's like, cause I have to be. And I, I think you've heard me even say this, but there is this, this, 
a kind of inner tender place in me where, you know, I, it, it, when marriage ever comes to me, I will probably become a blethering, soft, little, like, mush on the ground. Because it's going to be that thing where all of a sudden someone's going to be coming to lift the bag off your shoulder. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to be like, wait, what are you doing? Lifting the bag off your shoulder. Wait, you can do that? Because I've been yep. living so long with the bag on my shoulder or, you know, it's like, you know, well, you got to let a guy open the car door. It's like, the only reason I don't is because I've had to open my own door for years. Yeah. It's like, it's going to take the learning process of, oh, wait, you want to open that door for me. Oh my gosh, no one's ever opened a door for me. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Th th I can feel kind of this, the, the yeah. tenderness of the Lord being, oh, won't that be a day when you don't have to be as strong as you are? Which actually then creates the, the this, and I don't, I don't want this to come off negative toward guys because I think guys are great. Like I'm raising a guy. He's amazing. Mm -hmm. Like I love my kid. And I love the fact that he's a boy. But it's been a, it's been really beautiful to to raise a son and be like, I want you to think she's a prize. Yeah. And you know, and I, I even know justice is kind of like, he's in that awkward stage of, he doesn't really even know what the right thing I would take him through department stores. And I'd be like, a woman loves perfume. And I'd mm -hmm. make him smell perfumes with me and all kinds of stuff just to show him that tender spot. But what makes me crazy about guys is that, in travel, I meet some of the worst men I've ever <laughs> met in my life. And I and I I'm sorry. But there is a I'm place I'm so excited to see where this is oh going. Oh gosh, there's a place in me that I'm like, I don't want to be out there and be grateful that I'm single. Yeah. Oh I, I, my it, it gosh, breaks Rita. My heart. It breaks my heart, guys. It breaks my heart. And I know that 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 guys can have, have the same story for women. I hands down. Totally. Sometimes we are wrecks, and sometimes I you said rats. We, we're rats. <laughs> <laughs> we're wrecks and we're rats. I mean, I know that we can be controlling and divisive and all this manipulating. I hate it when women come off like, especially women in the church. I hate that. But I have met more men that I have said under my breath, man, I am so glad I'm single on planes. Mm. Oh, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know why you guys were like this. I just, I, sometimes I'm like, I mean, what were you raised in? Like, were you raised with no manners? Like it's, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. Yeah. And I think I could about, shed a tear when like a guy grabs my bag oh, for me. Shed a tear <laughs> when a guy wants to put your luggage up. I mean, I never ask for it. I don't look for it. And then you, you catch know yourself funny? in your life. If you fly first class, the men normally bring your bag down for you. And that has that. I think that the level of success is a testimony to you, Rose, higher because you actually respect people and oh I, I, and my, maybe but, that's but the sitting wrong. in 35b <laughs> be throwing you back at you i it's 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 that should be the place where you were so aware of people because people are pressed in on you and you're so aware of people and i'm so aware of people i'm so aware of servers i'm so aware of those kind of people and i've never met the more of the rudest men where i feel like i'm a squashed bug and I catch myself being like, I don't think I was made to feel this way. And I sure. don't think they were made to treat women like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, just barreling past women. And I mean, it doesn't matter what age bracket you are. You could be a woman in a wheelchair. And I've watched a guy just kind of like, like push the wheelchair over to get on the plane. And I'm like, who are you? And it actually, that's when the strength and the, the white dragon comes out in me where I want to be like, hang on a second. I'll be right back. Because <laughs> I saw I, this. I saw oh, this clip. And uh, this girl was like, you could tell now when you meet a man, if they would have been one of the men who were fighting to get on one of the boats at the Titanic. Oh. <laughs> like, not helping the women and children. Oh, get, it is, and I was like, that is so real. You just know you fought to get so on one real. of those boats. It is so real. And it also should ricochet back to us to be like, because, you know, sometimes even in that situation, you know, traveling and stuff is kind of the, it presses you to, to actually, you know, really re make sure that you're being right in public. 
Sure. And, but there is, man, there are just moments where I'm just like, oh, I mean, having a, a baby, traveling with the baby all those mm. years, I remember being in, in, on the plane and, um, you know, back then you got upgraded because there was nobody, there was not lines and lines of people with credit cards linked to the airlines that they could get upgraded to. You actually had to fly the miles to get upgraded. Sure. And so you'd get, I would get, I would love that upgrade to get upgraded and, and I would get in my seat with justice. And if a guy sat down next to me, there was a long, like drawn out sigh. Like this was going to be the baby. worst flight on their life because of that baby. And, and then at the end of the flight, justice was always so good. They would say to me several times this happened, but this one guy just was like, man, I thought this is going to be the worst flight of my life sitting next to you with that baby. But actually he's a really good kid. You must be a really good mom. And I was like, Oh my God. It's like, I also would have been a good mom if he was crying. I would have been a great mom if he was, crying. you know what I mean? And I just, uh, there's stuff like that, that I just, you know, you, you just be aware of, of how you're responding and how you're treating the opposite sex. If you want to know if it's your problem, there are a lot of signs. Yeah. If it's your problem. I and, like, and even so like the balance too, with like the women piece, there's so many friends of mine. I'm like, you need to be nice to men. Yes. Yes, girls. I'm like, you can be yes. kind. And I also think that there is a very weird, on both sides, we're just in a really weird time of dating. Yeah. Um, I think TikTok plays a lot into that. <sighs> I think it plays a lot into um, expectation mm -hmm. and what we think we should have from a partner the idea of growing with someone is like been like thrown to the curb yeah. that like if you're 27 and you marry someone that like you marry man, they, if they're 27, they need to have a house. They need to have a 401k. All the lists. They need yeah. to have all these things. They need to buy you flowers every single week. They I'm like where there's no growth. Yeah. And then I'm like, honey, you want a guy that makes well into six figures. You want all these things. What are also you bringing to the table right. there? Right. So I'm like, I think that, um, even talking to my like single male friends, like the expectation is crazy for a yeah. guy of like what they should already have. I don't know why we've thrown this like to the curb, this idea of like growing together, of building together, of like building wealth together, of like that those kinds of things are like, I don't know, kind of gone right yeah. now. And yeah. it's like, man, go on a date with that guy who's still building his business. You don't have to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like there isn't, you don't have to be completely developed and past the finish line. But I think with social media, we just see people way further along than we yeah. ever have. And it's giving us this false idea that we're supposed to be way further along than we are. Yeah. Like, why don't I own a house right now at 25? Right. And why aren't like, right. I'm like those things, the economy's crazy right yeah, now. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? And yeah. I'm like, and I think that we think, and what you were saying, learning what red flags absolutely are. And honestly, letting the Lord give you the vision for that and not this idea of culture. Cause yeah. like, it can be like, oh, well on our first date, he didn't take me to so-and-so restaurant. He took me to that restaurant and paid for it. And that's a red flag. It's like, that's not a red flag. Not a red flag. He was doing <laughs> what he can. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, it was a red flag that he didn't ask me to be his Valentine, even though we're boyfriend and girlfriend. You guys are already boyfriend and girlfriend. Why is there a Valentine's yeah. Day proposal? Now? Yeah, those expectations. Those are I'm just like, un... we have made these crazy yeah. things and these crazy unmet expectations that we find from some random couple on social media who's probably doesn't all have it together yeah. how we think they yeah, do. Yeah, exactly. And then now we're going home to like full relationships and being like, you're not fulfilling me because so and so did this and this and this yeah. and this. And then I think that that's where like we put these crazy expectations on men. But I also think like even to say the strong woman aspect, if you're a man and you're intimidated by how strong the woman that you like have in your sights, I want you to know that what like what you were saying, like women do want to be taken care yeah, of. And of that's course. not this like demeaning thing of like, oh, we can't be strong and independent. We can still be strong and independent, but we also yeah. like partnership. Yeah. And most women that you see who have it all together, who are so strong, who have had to figure it out, would love relief. Love and relief. Like all you have to do is just be strong yeah. and show up. 
and no, like absolutely. those kinds of things. So I think that there's like that really false expectation of like, oh, well, she'll never let me lead her. Actually, she's dying for someone to lead her. Yeah. But there's never been a man who's strong enough to actually just go ahead and right. lead. And I think that even too with like, I was having a conversation the other night. What was fascinating to me and my singleness, and I know that there's probably a lot of women who will agree with this. Um, I was always so shocked that men didn't value the things in me that I thought were valuable. Mm. That the things like how much I love the Lord, yeah, how I was like a yeah. prayer warrior, how I was like, why is that not so valued? And why are the men that are my peers that I share platforms with, yes. all these things that are single men, why are they going for girls who aren't even in the church? Yeah. Who aren't who like, don't have it any was, value. I was like, it was very shocking to me. And not to say that like those women aren't amazing. It was just this difference of the term being unequally yoked. Yes. Is when you have two oxen who are not at the same place, you will go in circles. You cannot harvest or till the soil yeah. of the field you are working on yeah. because you will yeah. go in circles. So I'm like, for men and women, women, when you're dating someone who is not on the same level yes. as you spiritually, you are going to go in circles. You're wondering why am I in the same cycles? Yep. Unequally yoked means we're going to keep going around the exact mm -hmm. same thing. Men, you're going to keep going around the exact same thing. And I don't know what it is about that spiritual intimidation sometimes i'm like with that man and woman dynamic i'm like when a woman is so strong spiritually that is the greatest gift you can have yeah women are seers they're prophetic yeah and they literally pull on the yeah. heart of god yeah i'm like you find that in someone you run towards it i'll never forget like there's something that clicked in me years ago and i just had this moment and i was like it's one thing to be in like a little toxic relationship and you're dating and that's like all fun and games. Sadie Robertson said this and she goes, that's all fun and games. And then they're the dad of your kids and they're toxic. And that fun little dynamic that you had while you were dating that boy. Yeah. And, well, it was kind of giving me this like rise and fall. That's now the father of your daughter. Yeah. Yeah. And they're giving them that dynamic. Yeah. And it's like, Oh shoot. You're not marrying just the person that you're dating. You're marrying that person and now they're your parent. They're your co-parent. Yeah. And that's who your children are going to look to. And then it's this thing of like, man, I wanted someone that if I have a baby and they're in the hospital, they're going to pray heaven down. Yeah. I don't care anything else anymore. Yeah. Like there are so many amazing other things and I love all these qualities about my husband, but I know that heaven will enter the room if there's ever anything that we need to be contended for. Yeah. And that's like otherworldly because you, everybody's one phone call away from being on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like yeah. that hot guy that's like fun and like a little inconsistent. It's like, what happens when you get that phone call and you're on the ground? What are they going to do? Yeah. What's going to happen? You've got to start thinking about all of those things. Yeah. If you want real true relationship yeah and i think that's why i i just man i just felt like we needed to do a part two to really go in and talk about just those things and and when we're talking about it, it we you have to examine your yourself it's oh, like i course. have had to do so much self-examination on what is it that's me where are my insecurities where is this where is that it's not just about god putting you in a waiting room and you're waiting for a bus that never shows up because you're such a good Christian. It, <laughs> it's not about that. It feels like that sometimes, but it, it, it really is, you know, the, the amount of time that I've been single, I'm not going to say to you that all that whole time has been about God just making me wait. That has been about a time of me being pruned and clipped and, yeah. and, and constantly, you know, um, and me being in a season sometimes where um, you know, I had friendships and, you know, was, was with friend groups that I should have never been with that actually maybe detoured me or created time and energy that I didn't have to spend on that. 
It's totally. other people's decisions. Totally. It's all of that stuff. And I think, I just want you guys to, to realize that those are, that are, that are piped in and listening to this and you've got to be encouraged. And it's not just like something must be wrong with me. Let me go find out what's wrong with me. Yeah. Ask the Lord that question. Don't put yourself on a cutting block where you're, you're, you know, making up stuff thinking maybe it's this and that. I think everybody's pretty aware of their own stuff. And pretty aware, aware of if you're a control freak and you can't keep a guy or you can't keep a girl because you have to have it a certain way, man, it might be a great idea for you to go look at why you're such a control freak and what's the root cause and what docs are you tethered to in those, in those controlling issues that, that create disaster in your relationships. And, and look at it from, from a prime level of, okay, yeah, let's take, let's take, yeah, let's, some notes here and let's, let's do take this. Take inventory. And I think that that's such a beautiful way to live life as a whole, not just like in the singleness area. Oh, like, as, oh gosh, it's so beneficial full circle. It's like having the awareness of, hey, what part am I playing in any sort of like dynamic in my life that I want to look differently? I think of, I don't know the scripture reference, but the story in the Bible of the blind man that had to be taken outside the city to be healed. Yeah. And the name of the city that they took him outside of, it was like just a really tough area. And the, the message in there being God's not going to give you the healing in an environment that is immediately going to undo it. Like he had to be taken outside of the city to find his healing. Yeah. And I think too, even what you were saying about so like good. communities and yeah. friend group and like, I am now and all like with doing premarital and just gleaming from marriages that I love. Every person has told me a healthy marriage takes a community. Yeah. And they're like, it matters where you're serving it together. It matters. It matters that you're it planted. Matters. It like those Who kinds of things. Who do you have things. around you? Yeah. And I'm like, if you are surrounded by a bunch of really toxic single people or people who are in the same cycles, I'm like, that is you are no better than the five closest no. people around you. And that's just the law of science. Yeah. Like you become the medium of the five closest friends. And so it's like, who is pouring into you? Who are you gleaming from? Like I, marriage was a tough idea for me when I was a part of certain places and when I was planted in certain seasons because I was like, man, I feel like everybody around me is falling apart. And then I move to the church that I'm at now and I'm like, I'm around so many people that I'm like, I'd want your marriage. I'd want your marriage. I'd want your marriage. And then here I am being like, wow, I think I actually would like that. Like I would love that dynamic in my life. And that's just something that yeah. is different and that you have to, that's something you have to invest in. Yeah. Like it is like, okay, I'm going to take myself out of this cycle. I remember when I was in a really toxic relationship and I had a pastor in my life tell me, like, you are in a friend group of wolves and you look like a bleeding animal. And I was like, huh. And I was like, okay, I have to take responsibility that this is who I've surrounded myself with. Yep. And this is like the season that I'm in right now. And I'm like, okay, I need to be outside of that. Yeah. Because the healthiest, most incredible person could walk into your life, but and you, you see, see are it. a you burning house. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So there's no, yeah. like, there's no room for that. So I, yeah. I love the idea of like, yes, every person has value. If you're listening to this, you are so valued. The yeah. Lord has someone so set apart for you and there is work also. There's Faith work and works. I'm like yeah. the work side is getting yourself cleaned up. It is being in good environment it is serving. It is saying surrender to Holy spirit. And the faith part comes in of, okay, Lord, how do you want this? How do you want me to keep walking in this? How do you want this person to come into my life? Yeah. And like, that is the beautiful combination. And the Lord is also sustainer. Like I, um, I think it was maybe last time we were with Brooke, we were sitting down and we we're all talking about, and Brooke was like, Rita, I look at your life and you're one of the most successful people I know because of your relationship with the Lord and how you know him yeah. to be. And, and I'm like, if someone has the wrong lens and we're looking back, oh, well, she's still single. It's like, you've had such a full, fulfilling life. Like there hasn't been this like, yeah. oh, you've been in sackcloth and ashes and been like, 
I'm just a single woman who's strong and intense. Years. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> no, you've traveled around the world. Yeah. You have a beautiful son. You've lived such a full yeah. life. You don't have to bench yourself because you don't have one of the things that the Lord, you feel like the Lord's promised to you and you haven't gotten it yet. There's still so many things to be done and a full life to be lived. And I think it's, you know, I think this statement, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave this statement here because I think it, it's just a full rounded statement. You will always date what you feel worthy of. Mm -hmm. You will always align yourself with the people that you feel worthy of being around. And that goes for um, the trash that you date um, and the excellence that you, that you surround yourself with or, or the, the uh, people that you know, are worthy of your attention because it, it really goes into self-awareness. And if you are living in a season of your life where you don't really care about yourself, you, you've got all this trauma going on, all this drama going on, and the friends around you are wolves, you know, you're going to date what you feel worthy of. And I just, I want to kind of leave you guys with some of that because I'm telling you, I could say to you now, um, my, my um, list of who I would date is so much more intense now because my value is too high. And, and it's not, I'm not talking about, well, you're just expecting things. That are, I'm not talking about being in a fairy tale, you know, dreamland. I'm talking about that guy would have to come to the table really, um, really knowing the Lord and knowing that I'm valued by God. Yeah. And that means everything. And that actually kind of sets you up to be able to breathe and sigh when those guys aren't there. And it's sad because they're far and few between. You know, I think the same thing for probably guys trying to date women. You know, I want to be the best I can be, but I'm also not looking for perfect, but looking for value. And I just, man, I, I love having these conversations. I think we'll have more of these conversations um, it would actually be really cool to do like a Q and A where maybe people could just send in, you know, maybe have you guys send in questions and, um, and then just spend a, a podcast just answering some of these questions. But I hope this helps. Yeah. I hope it helps encourage those of you. I just thought it'd be so cool to have Anna who has been walking in this journey, still very young walking this journey mm -hmm. and, and just got married, but she, it could have been disastrous. And, I'm still waiting, much like so many other people, but I'm healthy, I'm whole. I love Jesus. Yeah. I, you know, I'm strong. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and there's no apologies for it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just be encouraged. Be encouraged. Single people be encouraged. Single men, single women that God, you know, if this is a desire of your heart, God's going to. Yeah. He's going to see you through. I mean, look at Anna. <laughs> remember I'm the like, scripture that we started out with today <laughs> hope deferred <laughs> makes the heart sick but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life praise the lord